Welcome to the Sherlin Shirley Show. And today's guest, we have John Righeimer. He is a chairman of the Sawyer County Republican Party. And he and I all many times get together and talk. And we talk about lots of things going on within and out of the party and what's happening. And there's been a lot happening, even from the top. Him and I uh, texted back and forth to each other. We look like a bunch of clowns, no offense, but as this is getting really frustrating for many of us out here. So please welcome John Righeimer to the show. And thank you, John, for being willing to just chat. You and I were talking a little bit before about what happened on a phone call last night to one of our congressmen. And and it's just getting to a point to where there's no decorum. And, and I guess probably what gets me, and you and I can talk about this a little bit, is why are we not attacking the Democrats? <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, if you look at that, the, the issue we're talking about, I mean, that seat was held by Democrats for what, 30 years or something? I mean, yeah. close to it. Mm-hmm. And I guess they'd rather have Ron Pine in office. <laughs> I mean, it's frustrating. It's discouraging when you see that. Well, you know, to me, it's part of the party, so to speak. What's discouraging is when you see that and there's no repercussions for that. And that is continually loud, not only at the party, or at other parties around the state. We, right. We don't have to name the name. Diminishes what I think I'm a part of. Yes, and me it, too. It makes me question what I'm a part of. It makes me question the validity of what I'm doing. Doesn't matter who cares. Right. If, if, uh, one of my favorite sayings is, it, it, you know, so what? Who cares? Yeah, exactly. I know. So, it's so that so the party system is broken. <laughs> who cares? Right. Nobody, I guess. Right. So then that circles me back to, well, if nobody cares, then what, what am I doing? Right. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of volunteer time, a lot of time taken out of your your other duties that you could be doing and other things that you could be doing. And I know that, too. So it is very frustrating. And, you know, obviously, I've been through some things that have, are, are very frustrating. And then when I see things like that and it's it's so shocking that you have to actually cut a mic on someone yet. They cut the mic and the person then starts writing signs and holding them up. And you're doing this <laughs> disrespectfully to a sitting congressman. Now, we we can agree to disagree on whatever issues that you want to disagree on. And I'm not sure what that was all about. I'm assuming because he voted for Kevin McCarthy, maybe. Or Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. And, you know, it just fascinates me that we attack our own constantly instead of attacking the other side. I mean, there for a while, I was like, great, because it seemed like... Um, Democrats were really getting what they were supposed to get. You know, it seemed like uh, people are starting to open their eyes to the whole gender thing, to many issues that are going on the border. Now, all of a sudden it flip flops and and they're going to build the wall. I mean, I'm just so and they're going to pass all of these restrictions that they put on everybody else to build a wall. But they're just going to follow right through and build a wall. And it blows my mind that this is happening and then we, what do we do? We circle the wagons, all right, but we turn around and shoot ourselves. <laughs> it's just yep. so stupid. I think you're right. I do think um, something needs to happen at the leadership level, the high level, and they've got to step in and do something because it's disrespectful. There's no decorum. And it's also when you have good people that are out there working like you and I that are really doing work and really want to help the party. We want to help. We're good conservative Republicans. We want to help the party. And when we're out there doing that and all you get is this, you kind of do get to that point to where you go, what in the world? You know, what's happening and why am I doing all of this? Yeah, because it, re- it really hurts. I-, I mean, we can all do our own thing in our counties and, you know, uh, address county board, school board, legislator stuff. And, and what that guy does down in Juneau is not going to affect me too much up here but in the statewide stuff it really does and that's my frustration with with the republican party system if you will in wisconsin is that there's no cohesion there's no alignment and when you have 72 counties doing whatever the hell they want you have some counties doing good stuff you have some counties doing nothing good or bad then you have some counties doing bad stuff mm-hmm. but either way unless all 72 are running in the same direction it, it doesn't really have an impact mm-hmm. on a statewide situation and i often Here's my new thought of the day, because I, a part of me just finds it fascinating. Um, <laughs> maybe RPW does not have a model of what success looks like. Meaning, we know, I'm, I'm sure they would agree that, like, 
what happened last night was bad, right? Sure. And I have in my head, like, well, not only is it bad, but this is what we need to do. We need 72 counties all pulling on the same rope at the same time in the same direction. Then you've got something there. Unless all 72 are pulling in the same direction, you're probably not going to have any impact. I don't know if they would agree or disagree with what I just said there. I don't know if they have in their history, a model to say, yeah, John's right. We've seen that happen before. I know we've had success in the Walker era and the Thompson era, but did we have success because of the county party system? Or was it the nature of the beast, the times we were in? And were those candidates, for lack of a better phrase, just so good that they won? How much of that was really because the party was strong? Now, granted, the party back then was not doing dysfunctional things, Mm-hmm. And that's the sense I get that the, that the RPW just wants to get back to even keel. Yeah, I think normalcy is the word that um, I hear once in a while, but we don't even know what that is anymore. Do no harm. Right. Exactly. I, I that would be that would be that would be an improvement from what we're seeing now. Yeah. But to me, do no harm. I, I think we. I think I, I think it should be better than that. So do I. But that's me. And I know. I know when I go back in my corporate life. I mean, some of this is what's going on now, and I've heard things that John Righeimer is a steamroller. God forbid you wouldn't want him, you know, in charge of these things because he'll run over people. These are the same things I heard in the corporate world. So part of it's just me, which in the corporate world, I reflect at that time and said, you know what? I'm just not meant for this. Mm -hmm. They're they're content with mediocrity. I'm talking about the corporations that I with. They're content with mediocrity. They're too fearful of somebody like me because for some reason it scares them. And so I left. I ultimately mm-hmm. started my own business because then I can't, like, excuse my friend, piss anybody off. Right, right. I love, and this is not the great, I mean, there's great, uh, Brian Shimming's great, and other people, I, 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 this is not a knock on them. It's no, on the I know. Organization itself, and I just wonder, subconsciously, are we content with mediocrity? And if the goal is to get back to mediocrity of doing no harm, you know, that doesn't really float my boat either. So, right. Um, well, here I can just just hibernating back in my local area, and it's like, yeah, th- maybe it's not bad enough yet for 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 them to say mm, we got to do something drastic. Bad enough would be losing the, the House majority, losing some legislator seats in the Assembly, mm-hmm. certainly not winning Senate. Uh, maybe losing the Senate seats mm, in well, twenty eight. But Ron Johnson is going to run again and win and say everything's fine. I mean, I don't know what it takes to hit. This yeah. is like a drug addict, right? <laughs> Right. It hasn't hit bottom. Well, I'll just share this with you because I have been here for a long long time and I have witnessed many things. I would say, yes, you're probably right about 2008, 2009, when the whole Tea Party Patriot group started and the conservative uh, movement did happen with Governor Walker in 2010 winning. And I will tell you, I do believe wholeheartedly the party did come together when the recall happened, uh, when they tried to recall him and Rebecca Clayfish in 2012. That was a time where I felt like it was a movement. There was a movement among us that we were going to fight and we were going to fight hard and we were going to make sure that everyone understood that um, we wanted Governor Walker to stay in his seat. And and he was being recalled mainly because of Act 10. That was it. I saw that. I saw it come together. I saw us fight hard. I can remember having people standing on corners with the, you know, we stand with Walker And uh, signs, there would be 30 or 40 people standing there. And we had people honking like crazy. Now, that was just in our little county. But I also was involved statewide at the time. And so I saw it across the whole state. And some of it was because people just got angry about the recall part of it. It was crazy. And, And the whole thing that happened in the Capitol. And many times, you know, as you know, living up in the Northland, and you don't have the media that you have other places. So you don't even see it. You're not witnessing it like you are in other areas. So I really witnessed that um, full force and I saw it. And in 2012, when Governor Walker won the recall easily with more votes than he had initially, which is crazy, it showed that, yes, that we were very strong together. I think what um, has happened since then is there's been so many different changes within the party. Donald Trump winning in 2016, which, hey, I was on the Trump train very early and excited. And you, I know you were too. We've witnessed that. And then in 2020, something happened that kind of fractured a whole lot of things and a whole lot of people. And it's fractured their, their sense of um, believing, their sense of 
of understanding. And it seems like a lot of people want to, and this is just my take on it. This is my opinion, but a lot of people want to step up and be Trumpian, you know? Yes. And yeah, they, 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 right. They want to, they're all the, all those activities kind of trickle from that and they're very Trumpian. Yes. You know, holding up the sign, sticking it to the man. We don't support you. Look what I'm really sticking at the Derek Van Orden, you know. Um, yeah. Who's a congressman who who fought two times. I mean, he ran two times. He won the second time. And it's the first time we've had a, a Republican congressman in this district in over 30. I think it's like 34 years or something. And that's, well, and, you know, and what's killing me, too, is like in all cases. Now, Juno is just the latest example, but there's other counties that are like that. In all those cases, it's like the people are you are, are too lazy or dumb to start their own five hundred one c three four whatever you know, it would be and make it the Derek we hate Derek Van Orden group. Mm -hmm. You know they could do that all day long and that would be fine. But because they're too lazy and or dumb, they somehow waltz into the county party and become chair and turn this into a little activist group. Right. And RPW is like well, we can't do anything about it. But find a way then. Right. What right. is the class to find a way that no matter what, we're going to rid it, rid the party of this kind of garbage? Well, I get it. You know, well, if there's a constitution, it's all built from the bottom up. I think it should be more top down. Me too. I'm not sure how we can get there, or how how long it would take to get there. But my goodness, and maybe the plan is there. And I'm not I'm not aware of it. Well, I can tell you <laughs> that when I saw like the checklist for the constitution, okay, from from RPW. At the um, at the convention, and they gave every county a checklist, and I kind of got the idea. Oh, this is a good idea because they want to make sure that everyone has their constitution basically about the same. Which, honestly, when you're doing a an organization like R Republican Party of Wisconsin, and all the yeah. county all the counties fall under that essentially, why in the world aren't we just going by their constitution? And then right. these people. There's not these 72 different constitutions. No, there shouldn't. It seems ridiculous to me. And and when you read some of the constitutions in some of these areas, you just shake your head and you go, how did that happen? How did you put that in there? For instance, the county that I happen to be in, in one of their things in the constitution is the fact that they do not give any money to any candidate or any elected official running for any office, any right. office. Yet, yet in the last um term in, in February of 2022 for the spring election, two people that ran for school board that are now one of them is the county chairman. And I'm sorry, I'm calling him out. I'm not saying his name, but he got money. He received money. So how did that get voted on? But it's against the Constitution. For a nonpartisan race, too, which is like a whole nother. Kind of well, it's so frustrating. And then you look at that and you go, OK, so rules for thee, but not for me, you know, and that's exactly what happened. And, and there's been some real contention because of it. This is a person who uh, I have no, no respect for anymore, you know, and this person was a person I considered a friend and it's sad. And I see, and, you know, I had to like kind of talk to RPW about some, some things and the third congressional district chair, as well as the seventh and copied them in on everything because it's ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous. And the things that have happened are, are wrong. And it's like, what, you know, <laughs> and nobody's doing a thing about it. So you just sit here and you just go, okay, so. I'm being a good sport. I'm doing what I can, but it's very frustrating. And then when I see this, you know, when you sent me that, the information about last night's phone call, it's disturbing. And it it's like, it's so deep in some of these places, it's entrenched. And how do we, how do we fix it? And I've been nothing but a good conservative Republican my whole entire life. So to me, it seems very interesting that it's not good conservative Republicans that are in the party any longer. There's a lot of people that have infiltrated and want to do things their way, and mainly because of the 2020 election. And all of us know that, but nobody wants to say yep. it. You know, nobody wants yep. nobody wants to say it out loud. And so it's like, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it because I'm very frustrated with it, and it's ridiculous, and it's going to tear us apart. And if we don't get our heads out of our butt, we're going to lose. I don't know what I can do to help because I tried. And when you try and you try and you try, you know, the whole thing is like, I, I'm a Winston Churchill fan going through hell. Keep on going. Yeah. At some point. I mean, I keep on going and I do keep on going. How do you circumvent what's happening? And you and, you know, the county chairs are the ones that get all the emails and all the information. They're the ones that can yeah. attend the meetings and everything. You can't even as a member, a good standing member who has fought for years for the right part of the party, really and truly gets no say 
you get no say. Now they can tell me that I don't, I can't even be a delegate if they want. So it's very disturbing to me. And I've been a delegate for many years and attended many conventions. It's very disturbing to me. And I hope that doesn't happen, but I could see it happening. I see what this group is about. Yeah, because it might might have to get worse before it gets better. I had a a similar conversation within the last day with somebody. And the person said, what, are you suggesting to quit? I said, well, no, no, I'm not saying you quit necessarily. But I think we need to be prepared that it might have to get worse before there's a chance to get better. And that goes back to the where's the bottom, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, if you were to say right now in 26, who who is the odds on favorite to be the winner of the governor? And I know a lot of things can change, but it'll be Tony Ebers if he wants to run again. I would put a ton of money on him right now. Wow. That that just hurts my stomach. Well, well, if nothing changes between now and 26, why would we why would we win governorship? Yeah. Now, maybe there's some candidate out there that I'm aware of that's a superstar. And but that's a whole other point, too. We're so reliant upon the superstar candidate to save us. Who also can self-fund. Tim Michael what could could I guess maybe self-fund. He chose not to in general. He was a terrible candidate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She never went forward anyways. Right. Um, I don't know how from Adam or or uh Mara from Adam seem nice enough. I guess they can sort of self-fund to make it look like there's an effort there. They still are gonna be outspent by Tammy Baldwin. So I mean there's a lot. Right. I mean, so I guess the point of all that is. Well, and I also got to add too. you know, I, I, I sort of feel this way. Maybe those that who's the power that can change something. Maybe there's nobody. Right. I don't know. I, I keep thinking there's a group that has the power that if they wanted to, you could change it. But, but maybe there is no such thing. Maybe there maybe if there is, they're waiting for the Trumpian thing to I mean, the next bookmark in the Trumpian discourse is going to be is he the, at the top of the ticket. Right. If he's not at the top of the ticket, you know, to what extent does this whole issue of, or challenge we're facing change? Mm. You know, maybe this scenario would be good, right? You know, if he's out of the way, that guy last night from Juno, you know, he lost his so quote unquote leader. Is he that inspired to even be part of the Republican Party anymore? Well, right? that is very true. I believe wholeheartedly you will see people um, either either rising up, you know, and being more angry, yeah, getting worse, and then somebody needs to step in and just say, and and it should be they should be stepping in now. I kind of had hoped that maybe um, the rules committee and the constitution committee would step in and do something about some of these rogue places. And I just, I mean, I have the faith because I really believe in the party because I always have. But it is getting to be harder and harder to see it, even though you can talk to people. Uh, higher up and they feel the same way we feel, you know, how do we, how do we go about, you know, getting that out, but how do we go about getting that out? And and many of them are too afraid to say anything because they're afraid they're going to rock the boat on somebody voting. Exactly. And that, uh, candidates, candidates and legislators. Now DVO looks like he's not afraid to say something. I don't know if he's being hurt by what happened last night. Does it, it certainly is not a good indicator for his reelection. I don't give too much credit to Juno with the power they have or not have. Silence protects the strange. Yes. They, and there's nobody to tell them different because the party's so weak. See, my grand vision, and, and I guess it's unachievable because people look at me like, oh, John, he's naive. Oh, John wants that Chicago way. Oh, John, okay, I'm a big joke, I guess. But my vision would be that the party would be strong enough someday to say, XYZ legislator. Do not show up at that crazy county party. Right. And if you do show up, there's a good price to pay. You're going to lose something. But see, and this is no fault to the current RPW staff. It's so weak. What What are they going to do for the person that, you know what I mean? What yeah. are they going to do? Right. Well, and Aren't here's you showing a Z event to help them raise money because at the same time, there's an election denier there and a bunch of crazies and, and you're just feeding the crazy. Right. What, what are you going to do to me if I do go? Or the, do anything. Right. It's true. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. They have their system down. It's fine for them, but it's not helpful for the for again statewide races. Right. So. Right. Well, and it's very frustrating. And and you know you're seeing this everywhere though, John. You're seeing it in our schools, for instance. Um, schools are only as good as the community wants them to be. So in a way, our county parties are only as good as the community wants them to be. If you yeah. if you elect these people in these positions then it says a lot about the counties. It says, you know, there are issues and maybe yeah. that's what RPW is trying to do is trying to get, you know, like understanding, okay, this is how this community is. I just think that honestly, 
was 72 counties. And, you know, we were at the last convention and there were 68 counties that were represented, which is pretty good for an off election year. In that, we saw issues. <laughs> we witnessed a couple of things that happened there. And then Cheryl, that same guy last night in the cone was the same guy right. who was causing issues on the floor. The same guy that Derek Van Orton said, we're going to go to lunch. Right. Him and some other disruptor. Mm-hmm. Another disruptor chose not to go to lunch. Right. DVO went to lunch. I happened to see DVO later that night at dinner. He walked over to our table. We asked him, how did that lunch go? Oh, it went great. It went great. Uh, I think we, you know, had a meeting of the mind, blah, blah, blah. DVO walked away and I turned to my cohort that was sitting with me. I said, I, I bet you it, did, it has turned out not going all right. Right. And smile to your face. Yeah. And then stab you. And so, right. And it's the same guy. Part of it, caucus. I know. I was going to say the caucus. That's right. Yeah. And because they don't follow the rules. <laughs> Are we better off as a, as a party, state party, with or without Juno? Republican Party the way it's constructed. We would be better off if they just didn't even exist. Yeah, I totally sure. understand. So, addition by subtraction, what's the point of even, I mean, again, it's, it, it isn't little when I go through that path. Here's the guy wasting people's time, babbling whatever he was arguing about on the floor at the convention. Mm-hmm. That's strike one. Uh, scroll strike one, that was strike two. Strike one was caucus. the nonsense yeah. that they pulled at pocket. Yeah, that was nonsense. It was it was actually very disrespectful and, and disgusting that you think that you don't have to follow the rules. Everyone else does, but you. And it's rules for thee, but not for me. You know, it's just so disgusting. And I was stunned by that. And I did like uh, one of the county chairs stood up, remember, and he kind of called him out on it. Yeah, why don't you go vote? And voting was what, April 4th? They said, why don't you go vote yeah. on April 5th and see what difference that makes, you know? And that's kind right. of what the whole thing was about is like, you show up, you don't sign up which everybody knew they had to. I mean, I actually did it like eight hours after the cutoff was, and I did not get to sign up. I had, I went as media cause I was podcasting, but it was terrible because the way that they treated the whole, and, th- and then they dragged it on for how many more hours, four more hours. It was disgusting. And when you witness that and you're sitting there and you're just shaking your head and you're going, why are we allowing this to happen? And, well, Frank, and what does that say to people that maybe come in somewhat new to yes. be resourceful and useful? Yes, and exactly. Go, what, what am I joining? Yeah, why, my, why, why would I be a part of this? Yeah, and you try. Well, no, we're not all like that. Yeah, but I mean, it's hard. It's very hard. It's hard. And you know, you, know we're, you and I are going to get you and I are going to get slaughtered. You know that we'll yeah. be called rhinos and and uh, let's see, I've been called a, a Democrat plant and all kinds of things, which just fascinates me. We will get slaughtered for doing this, but I still wanted to do it because I really believe somebody has to speak out. And you know, you and I both have talked to other county chairmen around the state that know us and that know that these things are happening and that it's got to change and we want to help fix it. That's the biggest part of it. You and I both want to help fix it. How do we do it? And we have to have the backup of people that are um, in RPW and our legislators. I One of my legislators actually sent me a text and said, you know, probably the only way it's going to happen is when we lose, you know, to the, yeah. the whole if Trump does get the nomination. And I'm not saying obviously I would vote for him. I voted for him twice. Yeah. If we lose and I have no idea if we would or not, I don't even know what to expect anymore. My political GPS is just going all over the yeah. place. He doesn't know what well, to do. Trump, I think Trump's at the top. We we lose president. Um, I think we lose. Uh, we certainly don't beat Tammy Baldwin. Right. I think uh, I think we possibly lose a few assembly seats, which Ugh. Um, Ugh. which 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 won't lose the majority necessarily, but it'll be a, a step backwards. And and what did Tom Tiffany win by? See, this this might be key. What did Tom win by uh, last time? Sixty two percent. Yeah, that's amazing. Right. That's I amazing. Would, I would say if Trump's at the top of ticket. Tom certainly doesn't crack 60. I think he could be a 55. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the way. Draw a Democrat win. Right, right. Yeah, because it's it's just anger. Trump and at the same time vote against Tom. Just not because they, you know, they don't even know Tom. Is this going to be right. Republican? I'm voting against him. No, Tom still safely wins, but that would be your indicator. It could be. Yeah, it could be. DeSantis right yesterday, yesterday, the day before, said that JFK. John, not RFK, JFK himself could walk through that door and Trump would still produce more Democrat votes than John F. Kennedy would. Wow. Because he, we, you know, he, he draws them out. Yeah. And it's just, it makes things, I think, harder for everything. Here's one of the things I was thinking on a constructive thing. No one's coming. No one's coming to the rescue. So I always, well, the powers that be, 
they're just not, they're either unable to or don't want to. I don't know which one it is. Maybe it's a combination of both. So I don't know if I can even pull this off, but I know, um, I'll just throw out the names. Washburn County, I can work with them. Mm -hmm. Douglas County, I can work with them. Uh, Place County, I can work with them. Possibly if things change for the better over Barron, I could work with them. What I'm getting to is, I don't even know if it's possible, but try to get a coalition of Northwestern County parties. So we would act, and some of us have crossover, you know, with state Senate seats or assembly seats. Right. Some of us don't. Right. right? Statewide, we'd all be together. So this is, we could work, obviously, what I'm getting at is alignment, cohesion. So when you look at Northwestern Wisconsin, a makeup of six or seven counties, it's not Sawyer County. Right, which is a very strong word. You know, come up to Northwest Wisconsin, it's 250 that you have to, it's, it's, yeah. it's a make or break on 250. Right. It's not all the fragmented, uh, yeah. Correct. Um, now, again, the, some of the counties up here, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure they would see eye to eye with me. And I'm not trying to be the king of this thing. I'm just trying to say, look, we are stronger. If we all act as one, can we all agree upon some principles? And if we can, we should all act as one. And if we don't want a certain candidate coming up here talking to us, we all say no. Right. That's part you of know? the that's part of the problem too, is there's been a lot of that. And we witnessed that before, you know, a few years ago yeah. during the governor race. We witnessed it and we both knew that it wasn't good. I mean, we, many of us knew, many of us did. Many of us were like, why are you allowing somebody to speak that didn't even call, give you the common courtesy to call and say they'd like to be put on the speaker role and they show up and think that you're just going to let them get up and speak. That's, that's, you know, it's, it's kindness that you're doing it and you're allowing it. And, you know, there are people that really maybe support that person and I get it, but give the person the common decency to contact them. It's easy to do. It's not hard. And it's a difficult position. I mean, it's difficult being the chairman. I understand that. I know the work that goes into it. I did it before. And, you know, um, for a very, very, very short time, <laughs> I sat as a vice chair where I am now. And uh, that was an interesting um, perspective on all of it, too, and witnessing the whole thing. And it's amazing when people talk about personalities instead of worrying about what the goal is. We all have the same goal, I would think. And that goal is to win. That's the goal. And to get good conservative Republicans elected. That's my goal. That's always been my goal. And I will work my tail end off to do it. Uh, And nothing is beyond what I can do. And so I'll do it. And podcasting is part of it, too. That's why I started doing it, because I wanted to get our voice out more. And then when I witness what's happening to the group, the party, it's just very frustrating and discouraging. But I also want to talk about some of the positive things. You've been posting a lot of positive information and you've kept it pretty much upbeat. And I appreciate that. I know you read the book on Boss uh, about how Daly ran his machine in Chicago, which honestly um, was really very strict. He didn't mess around at all. And maybe, and and we've changed so much from that. We've become, um, I don't know, I don't want to say wishy-washy, but we've kind of become where we, oh, well, we all should get along. Well, that's not going to happen. It's ev- evident that is not going to happen, and that doesn't happen in anything. That's why you have a chain of command in the military. You, you know, I might not like what you tell me, but if you're above me and you tell me I got to do it, well, then, by God, I got to do it. Lieutenant Labar well, exactly. comes into it, and she goes to work. It goes back to, if you don't like it, then don't. Exactly. You know, I think the things I love about the Daily the Red Boss, and I'm now reading Clout. I saw like that you showed that book. Sure. Similar. Um you know, written around the same time. So, but other nuggets in it. And when I brought it up, people dismissed me pretty quick because what they're going to focus, what they focus on. A Democrat is is he's a Democrat. He's a a Democrat. B was run, you know, semi-mafia like and the patronage jobs and all that. Yes. I understand that. I understand that that's, there's some of that you would not want to duplicate. And there's other pieces of it that you couldn't even duplicate. We should be able to duplicate some sort of cohesion that and it goes back to what you said, right? If you all had the same constitution and we all, you know, had some things that we had to abide by and have violated, that was a problem. You know, mm-hmm. you get a warning and, and it mess up twice, you get kicked out. Yeah. So I yeah, I think it's uh, my, my I'm thing fascinated by how they, he, he ran that machine. Right. I think there's elements of it that we should try to duplicate. Uh, it's a shame that, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, I think a lot of people would say no to it anyway. Right. There's a there's a mysticism 
And I don't know if I told you this, and I, I heard it a little bit even at our Reagan, uh, at least one uh, of the people talking, and it came to my head that when I hear the we're Republicans and we disagree with each other, and that's okay, we're all going to be a little different, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not admirable. I'm not admiring you for saying that. I think you're a sucker. <laughs> We are up against a Democrat machine and you're yes. telling us to go out there and we're getting mowed down. Right. We've lost a lot. Laz a fair, be free, do whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think one of my things is that um, the Democrats, they are always, they are so uh, in lockstep. We, yeah. we fight amongst each other. I mean, like somebody treating, I've seen it, treating um, elected officials disrespectfully, at meetings and things, it blows my mind. I, I, you know, I can, I can maybe not like something that they voted on or whatever, but I'll certainly talk to them um, alone, you know, and I'll say, you know, or I'll send an email and say, you know, I'm not really sure why you did this. And then when they send me back, what the reason is, oh, wow, that makes sense. I understand. And sometimes we got to give a little to get a little. And we witness that in many things, but it just is so frustrating when you actually, when people encourage, I mean, I talked to somebody a legislator at um, the picnic and you're speaking about. And I mentioned something about what was happening to me, which basically, obviously we've seen it happen in other counties too. I don't know if you heard about what's going on in Waukesha, but stuff's going on there, stuff going on in Barron. And, and I stated that something very similar to me in this County and the, and the person just kind of made a face like, no way, no way, not that, no, not that County. Well, yes, that County. And I know and you. Here's it with Cheryl too. Here's it get true from sometimes legislators or people that I think, not only legislators, people that I think I think have power to do something. You get the that's their battle. Yes. Let them deal with it. Well, what what if name your legislator? What what if they were under? Right. Correct. And that's exactly what my thing is. Is like, no, wait a minute. We should be helping and doing everything we can because it, it would be different if the people that we're doing it, that we're attacking, we're correct. That would be different, but they're right. not, right. they're not. And and the, the reasons are so ridiculous that you just shake your head and you go, what is happening? And that's my, that's my question. And then you, you look at some places and you just think, you know, well, they're, <laughs> they're nuts and they've always been nuts. And so everybody knows and it's that's sad to me. How do we yeah. how do we fix that? And um, I don't know exactly what the right thing to do is. I do know one thing that um, I don't give up, but it is frustrating, and I do get discouraged, and I do get, you know, that's why I like talking to you helps me a whole lot because I know you know we don't live in the same county. We're like hours away, and I know there's other other people out there too because I've talked to them, even people in charge of districts. I've talked to and uh, off the record and they, they know, they see it, they know all of it. And it's just horrible. Like, well, what are we going to do about it? How do we fix it? And it's sort of one of those things where they go, well, I don't think it can be fixed yet. Maybe right. it is. Maybe it is like being a bad drug addict or bad alcoholic. We got to hit the bottom and then we come back up. But I have talked to somebody pretty um, influential that's been influential in the party for a long time basically was told that, you know, just be ready, be there because we are going to need you when it's time and there will be a time it's coming. So just, you know, hang in there. And I hear that and I believe that. But then again, I sit back and I see what happened at the top. First time in the history that a speaker of the house has been ousted by one person, basically, who teamed up with Democrats. And yes. And then, then the story goes to all of us, how, dis, how, how much a disarray we're in. Instead of well, every crazy party that we talk about, love them. I know. And the team, they're all the same peas in a pod. Yes. And it's, uh, and Getz is representative of how these people behave as well. Yeah. Um, You're right. It's just, it's, it's I've, heard, I've heard similar, you know, hold on. Yeah. Uh, things are going to change. I, I, I don't know. I, I get part of it is, you know, we're, you and I, we're all human, right? And we've been kind of seeing this for multiple years now. And so our patience is maybe, you know, worn thin on it. I don't have to be brought in the know of every little thing they're doing on the positive, but we're going on many years of it getting worse. And so you start, you start losing some, uh, some faith. Well, we have, I mean, I, I do look at this. I, I kind of look at, we have a year, John, we've got a year. 
And, you know, we can make a big change in a year with all the fight going on and seeing us losing the Supreme Court. Many people don't even understand what that means. They really don't until things start affecting them. Then when you start saying, well, you know, this, they're, they're working on changing the maps, so the districts, and then every legislator, every s- senator that won is going to have to run again. And what happens then? What if they don't win? Because they change the maps. So you have to understand that everything ties together. And usually when a conservative jurist wins, um, they follow the Constitution. But a liberal one doesn't. <laughs> and they get away with yeah. it. I mean, I just heard about what was it? One judge, one justice got to make up the mind that the uh, law about abortion can just be done because he doesn't believe in it. And it's kind of like, what? What in the world? How could that happen? What is happening to our judges? What is going on? Fascinating. And then, of course, things will go through the court and we'll end up going, well, what do you mean they, they can do that? Well, and many people don't understand. But in my own county here, Um, fighting for things, only a certain amount of people came out and voted during the spring election because they don't think the spring elections are very important. And so how do you get that across to people? Well, that's why we lost Supreme Court. Plus all the millions and millions and millions and millions of disgusting money that came in from all over the country. And learning about that, that smurfing thing, you know, and there's, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, it's all bad. It's all wrong. We have to get it fixed, but you can't blame it on just Republican legislators. It's not. They're not doing that. So it's a really interesting time. It's an interesting time for sure. And maybe that's, maybe we were made to be at this time, John. Maybe we were made to be. Yeah, you know, possibly. And and there's still, you know, when things get hectic and crazy and they look bleak, I, I always, in everything that I do, it's like you start collapsing to closer and closer at home. You start collapsing to that moment. And from a, the political standpoint, it's collapsing just into Sawyer County. And it's, okay, what, what can we do here on the local boards, what can we do to ensure Chance Green gets reelected? That's right. Not really easy. Right. Um, beyond that, um, statewide, which is a mess, my thinking is, well, if we think we're doing everything for Chance possible to get him reelected, and that goes well, and we have little money left over, I'm going to call up Rack and say, are there areas where you guys, I mean, right. you know, here's $2,000, and that is our Therefore, we can maybe still, I mean, I'm not really confident on the governor's race down the road or anything statewide. You know, that legislator is still our sweet spot. You know, um, you know, Langley uh, spent money to uh, primary Robin Voss. I'm saying, no, maybe we spend money downstate, primary Republican, but help Republican win a legislative seat. Correct. Um, Correct. And that's exactly, but you look at my county and they don't even give any money to anybody and they hoard a whole bunch of it. It's amazing. It shocks me. And there should be rules. No sense. What is the point? I can't Maybe. even, I cannot answer. I mean, money is the only thing. Right. Now, here in Sawyer County, and, and I will not, I'm not giving myself a pat on the back. I'm giving the county members that are, are involved a pat on the back. I mean, I've, I've twisted it every which way, and I've finally come to the conclusion that it's all about money only because it's easier for me to get $25 out of somebody than it is to get them to walk doors. Yes, I It's understand. easier to them to um, bid on a pie, $50, than it is, you know, to get them to write postcards. You know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah. And I would say we have not done well walking doors as a group or doing anything. But what we've done well at is we've raised uh, we've increased our, our fundraising. Mm-hmm. And so I will, I will give a round of applause to the members that I think that's starting to penetrate to them that for various reasons, they don't want to do the other stuff or can't do the other stuff, but they're, you know, I'm not talking big money. You know, at our Reagan, we raised $5,000. I, I think that was great with the group of people that you had there. I mean, those, you know, your pie sale, and <laughs> your, that was amazing. That was amazing. I got to say that was an amazing time and it was fun to watch. And it was hysterical. You know, I got to give kudos to Stacy. Her apple pie must be the best because I've never seen I've never seen an apple pie go for that in my life. So that was pretty amazing. Yeah. So, so we, we, you know, uh, is that where's that money going to go? You know, I, I hope to raise more money at our Lincoln dinner. And, you know, figure some things out and hopefully have about ten grand going into the Chan's uh, sure. race. And I'm not sure at all ten goes to Chan's, but it's 
sit down with Chance and say, you know, wh- where do you need help? And symbolically, I'd like to give something just to wrap, just just for a symbol. Sure. I understand that. I really do. And I wish that our um, our county did things like that, but they don't. And they instead they um, decide uh, things that just make no sense. And um, it's amazing to me. Well, that- I have to give credit to where I've gotten a lot of that push on fundraise, fundraise, fundraise is Craig Rosan. I, I got to give him a lot of credit. Oh, yeah. He's good at that. He always has been. Craig, I was like, it all seemed odd. He's like, yeah, we've been bankrolling. Yes. We got 30 grand or whatever yeah. it is. And we're throw, we're, now we're going to throw it all in on Romaine. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. like wow. what you know? But it took him multiple years to get that 30 grand. Right. But he did do. But, Craig was always big on that. And he always pushed that. And, you know, usually like a county, I mean, really, a small county has maybe maybe three to 7,000. I mean, they just don't. You know, it's hard to raise all that money in a small county when you've got and now we have, we're facing inflation and everything else. It's tough, but um, you've done a really good job and I'm I'm pleased and I'm very grateful that um, we are kind of like minded and that we have that political junkie inside of us <laughs> that we we see things um, a lot alike. And that's why I feel so much better when I talk to you. I really do. It helps me. It helps me a whole lot. Yeah, it does me, too. And I, I see that you stay positive on some of the apps and you that's what you need to do and then when i see people put you know sheep on there or something i'm like what are you you yeah i kind of take it as a yeah i really think like well i don't you know i didn't think about it like was he yeah was he saying we're sheeple or something because we believe that i mean i don't know but it's like because we believe that we're not we're not we're not holding up uh we would need to support Derek van orden type stuff yeah i wouldn't you know, a party is so simple, right? I mean, it's um, you know, a couple of things. I always talk about it. it's, it's about it's about winning, right? Hopefully about winning elections. Yep, that's it. Um, and there's a lot of nuances to that that go into that. How do you win elections? Well, it comes down to doors, dollars, and dials. Or yep. Doors, dollars, and yep. say postcards because I'm not sure who really answers the phone anymore. What is a county party? What are you going to do? You going to knock on doors? You going to raise money or do both? Right. And it's like you got a combination of or one or the other or. If you're not raising money, then double up on doors. If you're not doing doors, then double up on raising money. And Green right. County just did that. Yeah. And 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 did no harm. And that's why brand I always throw in there. It's like in addition to working, just don't like like what happened last night was how many people were on that phone? How many people were on the phone call, John? I you know it was uh it was the third it, my understanding was it was the third congressional district. It was a Zoom call um for Derek you know, Dan Ver, Derek Van Orden. Yeah called that meeting mm-hmm. so i'm assuming it was at least all the chairs or the chairs that attended yeah that's really a shame it's a shame. Know, brand is little by little flow drip good slow drip bad i mean last night that's bad for the brand okay, in itself i guess you know it's forgotten but that times dozens and dozens and dozens of other times yeah you know, I, what, what do you, you know because is that really representative of juno mm-hmm. county my understanding is that Juneau County votes about 60% Republican. So it's a strong right. Republican County. Those, those 60% that vote, is that what they truly believe? They like, probably don't not. even know that's happening. No, they don't. And most of them don't. Most people don't even know. You know, a lot of members in, you know, like the membership here is, is large enough. When you, most of those members never come to meetings. They never, you know, they might get an email here and there. Uh, they just don't know what's going on. And then when they find out, they're somewhat appalled. And because of an issue with our constitution recently, people are finding out and they are upset. <laughs> and so it's kind of interesting to see how it's all going to unfold. We'll see. I'm just going to continue to chug along and do the best I can and keep talking to people like you and other people that that are the same as us and that agree. And I want to give kudos and I want to give a shout out to some of the RPW people. I know Leslie Hubert has put up with a whole lot and she's worked really hard. I do. I do see her being awesome, too. I really do. And I, I know she's she's really tried hard to uh, maybe try to make it where it's um, where you can negotiate and talk and you can at least be free with her and say what you think. And she's very good at handling um, the issues. And I, I just think she's in a place where, you know, she can only do so much. But I do think on the training part of it and all, she's very good. She's very motivated. And I appreciate what she is doing. And I know that it's tough. And, you know, I think a lot of the the spotlight, because we are going to have the national convention here, which is crazy and fascinating and wonderful and also scary all at once, you know, because of everything yeah. going on. And so it makes me think um, 
They've got a lot going on. And I know that. So I don't want to add to their agony or anything. I just want people to step up and finally just start saying, this is wrong. You can't do this. And we have to have some rules and follow, oh, for sure. follow the rules. You know, if you have a rules committee, follow the rules, <laughs> you know? Well, exactly. and, and I want to echo on, on Leslie. I went to the farm team training last weekend in River Falls and I was blown away by how good it was. Yeah. I went there primarily. My intention to go there was I had a few friends that were presenters. And I thought I'd go there to support them. Paul Benning. Oh, yeah. I like Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Presenters. I'm like, you know, I, I talked to Paul a lot. One of my best friends within the party and turning into a friend beyond the party. Right. So I'm like, I'm going to go support him. That's great. And be seen. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be seen. Right. I walked away and going, wow, that was that was really, really good. Right. And it's unfortunate that more people don't attend that because not only did I, I was reminded of stuff, I learned new stuff and I had a binder of stuff going, I'm going to have to read through this because it was in, in a good way, overwhelming. Right. To a certain degree. Well, that's, so that was going great. I think Brian Shimming, I mean, I, I, I can't say enough good things about him as right. well. I think he's really shown positive intent. I mean, yes. he's getting out there, he's talking, and I, and I know he kind of inherited a challenging situation. So yes. I just want to say, too, for the record, when I complain about No, I know that. I know. He's saying as me. Yeah, me too. It's not, yeah. it's not directed at any one of them because I've had nothing but good interactions with Me too. Me too. I, I Brian and I, I get along with him. I think he's wonderful. I think he's done a, a heck of a job. He's been everywhere. He's been everywhere. He's like the wind. You know, he's everywhere. And so I know he's putting his heart and soul into it. It's just that it's, she, we're such a fractured time right now that it's awful hard. And it puts him in a bad position, in a tough position. And, you know, he's trying to guide the party forward. And then you have, you know, three steps forward, two steps back kind of thing. And we need to start learning that we need to fight the Democrats, not each other. We've got to fight the Democrats. That's who we're going after. We're not going after Derek Van Orden. He's a good Republican. Yeah. OK, so you don't like a vote. Well, then discuss that with them. But don't point out things on a call and make him look like he's some kind of a knucklehead because he's really not. He's doing the very best he possibly can. And you know what? If you think he's not, then run against him. You know, get yourself out there. Bingo. You start your own. Yes. The fact to run against him or just run against him. Right. Right. You can do things outside of the party. I'm not saying these people can't do this. You know, the old cliche, this is America. You can do what you want. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't agree with what you'd say, but I certainly get upset because when you do it within the Republican Party. Affect us. It affects us. Yes, me too. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. Go run against him and see what happens because you have no clue what it's like to be yeah. a congressman. You have no clue what it's like to do the counties that he has to do. You have no clue what it's like to get out there and talk to voters, real voters, not just your little area, not just your little zone. Get out and talk to right. all of them because he has to talk to all of them, not just you. So it's really very disturbing to me, and it's happening to more and more of our elected officials. And I don't like it. I just think that um, respect, they won the seat. You know, I might not agree with everything they do. I lived in the Northland where we were under Democrat regime, and I'm not kidding you, for 35, 45 years. And now to see it turning red makes my heart just explode. I mean, I am thrilled to death. And I would give anything to help anybody. And I mean that wholeheartedly, and I will. Uh, I'll do podcasts. I'll help them with doors. When it comes time for Chan's, I, I'm definitely going to help him because I like him. I think he's a good guy. But I also help down yes. here. You know, I'll help Senator Tustin. I'll help uh, Rep. Krug. I'll help Rep. Rosar. I'll help. And I think she's hysterical. And Nancy Van or uh, Vandermeer, all of them. I'll help all of them because I think it's that's what we need to do. That's what our job is is to help them and support them. And so that's what I plan on doing. And I also plan on supporting RPW as much as I can. Um, but I also am going to voice how I feel about what's been going on and that they do need to step in and at some point say, we have 72 counties, you're right. And yes, you all have your whatever personalities and your whatever you deal with each county. But when it comes to the Republican Party, we have to work together. And if you don't like that, then find somewhere else to go. There's lots of other groups. And, you know, go do that. The constitutions have to be looked at. I know they're trying, but until they get that under control, I don't know what 
we can do except for try to do what we're doing. Well, I- exactly. And and I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to, I'll start in the easy ones, the easy counties that I already know the chairs pretty well up here. And, you know, we already think alike mm-hmm. and, and try to lay that on that they, why not create our own machine up here? Right. Where, uh, you know, we can, we each, you know, Price County's got a twenty five delegate, Sawyer County's got a what We're all kind of the same, but even if the three of us got together and say, you you win Sawyer, you're winning Price in Washburn and vice versa. Right. 75, it's not 25 that you're going after. And see if we can build upon that. Because, you know, the challenge, though, is going to be the ones that I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to prejudge, but like going back to Van Orden, like what I think they're upset about was him voting for McCarthy. Sure. I, I don't know if these people understand, like, I don't dislike McCarthy. I don't love McCarthy. I don't think Jordan's going to do a better job or worse job than McCarthy. I mean, you're sitting on a very fragile majority. Right. Exactly. It's hard to it's hard to do anything. Plus, you don't have the presidency or do you have the Senate? Right. So I'm not sure what you expect other than shutting down the government because you don't allow for the budget to go through with political is political suicide. I'm yes. not saying I like the debt, but to do that. It's not politically sound. Right. But other than that, what do you expect these people to do? So when I go and talk to these other counties to say, let's create this machine, I'm just, but can they be reasoned with is what I'm getting at? Yeah. It's kind of like, because in my eyes, it's like, well, what wouldn't we all agree upon? I mean, we want to have strength. We want to have meaning. We want to have impact. If we all act together, we have more of that. Well, you and definitely have more say. Douglas, I'm not going to tell Douglas what they need to do with Angie Sapek. That's not even in my Right, right. Territory. Yeah. However, we have a joint. We, we cross over with Chans, mm-hmm. cross over with Romaine. Right. We certainly cross over in statewide stuff. Why wouldn't we want to be a team? Let's stronger. work together. We're right. A team. And if yes. we're all thinking 80, 90 percent alike. Yeah, well, I know. Be more coordinated, yeah. I guess, is, you know. Yeah. They're more cool. Right. Well, I'm excited to hear that you went to the farm team. I'm going to go. Um, there's one December. I think it's the 16th. That's going to be in Black River Falls, which is closer to me because they're not doing one any, you know, any closer. So um, I'm going to go to that one and I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be kind of interesting just by reading up on it and all. It's so exciting. So I think that's a good thing. It's really good. And, you know, what I learned was uh, RPW can help you in ways that, like, I would have gone to Jim Miller for. And and I still will go to Jim. But, you know, Jim's unique. Right. Yes. Jim's in here. No, correct. Or on mailers. Um, yes, I, I know. I know. I go to Jesse Garza for stuff, but now I'm realizing. Oh, I could also go to RPW if I want. Exactly. Open my desk. Yes. I mean, so I didn't realize there's. You know, again, I'm not trying to. I guess I am trying to set put salve on what I said earlier because I'm not directing derogatory to RPW, but no, there's some neither. things that I wasn't even aware of that they are able to do. Yes. That the, would be helpful. Yeah. There's a lot of things I think that they can do that a lot of people don't know. And I, I think it's good. I mean, you know, you and I both know a good member at large for RPW too. And I know we talked to him yeah. once in a while and he knows what's going on in areas too. And he also feels the same as um, we do in many issues. And, and it's hard. You're bringing this stuff forward to these people and it's just really a tough crowd. And everybody knows that. I mean, the district chairs know it. All, everybody knows it. Everybody's aware of it. So it's not something we just actually talked about it openly. That's all. <laughs> so talk about it openly. And, and I will say this too. And I, I find a lot of similarities between my past corporate life and what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Now I've been on my own for almost 30 years. So, um, you know, the, I left the corporate life cause I didn't fit and, and, and poor, anything time you get more than a few people together, you start creating, you know, it, it becomes more of a, <laughs> of a dilemma, but, I saw it in the corporate world. I see it here. What I think RPW should do is not easy stuff to do. Right. It, it turns your stomach to be, to be confrontational. People don't like being that. I, don't, I will be confrontational. People see me as a confrontational personality. I don't really like being like that. I really don't. I mean, it, it, even when I am confrontational, it's churning my stomach. Sure. Most and people don't like it. So yeah. I understand. I understand the stuff that I would like to see them do just from a human nature standpoint is not most people don't want to do it and it's very uncomfortable. So, right. and I saw that in the corporate world too. It's easier to get along to go. Yes. Right. People would prefer to do that. I know the hardest thing I ever had to do when I was in the corporate world, I fired a lot of people. <laughs> I never liked it. Even when I hated the person I was firing. Yeah. I know. It was yeah. a sleepless night. 
Right. You're, you're, you're cutting off that person's source of income. Yes. And rarely did I fire anybody that I liked anyways. Usually I didn't like that person. Right. It was never easy. It was well, and, hard. and when you look at the world now, yeah. yeah. And when you look, yes, exactly. We get it. That's the most important part of it. And we understand what's happening. We see it. We don't like it, but we see it. And we know that maybe, maybe they don't know what to do, or maybe they're waiting to see what we can do. I don't know, but I do feel the same way that you do. And I think that something has to happen. Sometimes you have to um, rattle the cage to have something change. And I'm hoping that that happens because it's been very discouraging to me to witness over the last, uh, I would, well, you know, as well as I do a few years, more than one, that's for sure. So we've witnessed oh, things. Too. We always focus on the negative county parties, which have to be dealt with. Right. But I also suspect that there's a, probably a larger proportion of county parties that are necessarily just don't know what to do. Right. 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 Maybe, they, maybe they need to be told you should go to the farm thing. Or yes. I'm, not, I'm not trying to be harsh on them either. I'm no. just saying that's the opportunity. It's kind of like eliminate the negative. Those are the bad county parties. Figure out how you can make the good ones even better. Ones that are, and probably the biggest bucket is the ones that are not doing bad, but not doing good, right? Yes. It's human nature too. Yeah. And how can you lift them up a little bit? Right. And I don't know, as I speak, I don't even know you have answers for that, but there's a, there's an opportunity out there as well. Right. Well, I can tell you that I do believe RPW is reaching out, um, doing more than what I've seen. I, I, had more lists and things to do stuff with than I'd ever seen. I, you know, and yeah. they're sharing more information, which is really a positive too. So there's a lot of really good stuff going on too. There are a lot of areas that are doing very well. It's just discouraging when you find out about, you know, some of the areas that aren't doing so well and that have dealt with a lot of issues over the last few years. And I just really hope that our um, elected officials really understand that they do have a lot of support out here. I think sometimes they don't realize that either, just like Derek Van Orden. I mean, getting beat up by that on, on a call in front of other people, uh, chairman, and all, that's totally dis, disrespectful, un, unacceptable. Basically, if you want to do that, call them later. You know, don't waste my time. I want to listen to what well, the congressman I, I has to say. Too, there, there's something mentally not right with that person, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I would, would bank a lot of money. On that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make a comment because we might see him again. Yeah. I well, I, I I know, but you know what? I know a lot of people that do that kind of thing, John. <laughs> not just so I don't know. I don't want to say that because we might run into him again at caucus or something. <laughs> get, get my ass beat or something. I just, you know, I just got to remember how to throat punch, <laughs> Lieutenant Le, Lieutenant right, Lebeau. Yeah. Also, too, I'd be remiss without you know we don't have to go uh, uh, a long winded on it, but when Romaine Quinn is trying to do it, Baron, to make it right, right, correct, just so inspiring. Yes, I so, agree. Uh, so uplifting. Yes, um, it's just. It's so wonderful to see somebody that not only understands uh, the issue, that, that that's a problem, but is trying to do something about it. You know what I will say is I think you know, he comes from party. So yes. it's not like, and sadly, a lot of our elected officials don't come from the party, which is a whole other subject. Which I, if you could change it, you would have more of your elected leaders coming from the party. Yes. So there's more linkage between the two versus like, well, you know, there's the party and I'm, I'm the elected official and I kind of do my own thing. Yes. I think there should be more linkage there. So, you know, I think there's an example of when you are part of the party, you you see that core, that linkage between yes. the, the elected official and, and the county party versus the elected official just thinking, well, that's not Yeah, I was thrilled to see that uh, article that came out and that what he's trying to do. And I think it's fantastic. And I think if it catches there, it's going to catch other places too. And that's the that's the good of it. That's the good part. And so we, you know, I, like I said, I'd like to end it, you know, positive and just say, you know, hey, we have another whole year. And you know what, John, you and I both know something happens every week, let alone <laughs> sometimes every hour. Yeah, I get down, but I'll never quit. And I know you're the same way. I, I will say this, too. I think I, it's worth mentioning for the podcast, going back to daily and how you ran that machine. So as the mayor of Chicago, right, mm -hmm. powerful position, who else? Who do you think was the Cook County Democrat? party chairman oh my gosh was it him it was him yeah so there you go we are talking about linkage between right me and the elected official yeah there's good things about that yes. I, I really think that i, do I mean because yeah. otherwise it's two separate silos and i'm not and when you have problems like we're seeing it's harder i think to address i mean probably is actually a good thing so he, that's my hot take i yeah. guess people could disagree with me on that well that's okay i think um I, I still haven't read the book i am going to read boss because i think it's going to 
enlightened me and especially, you know, Chicago, the whole tie to Illinois, because that's where, of course, I was born and raised in Illinois. Everybody knew about the Daily Machine yes. and it carried on for years. So, um, there's a lot to learn and we can learn from anybody. You can learn from I can learn from a Democrat mayor in Chicago. I have no problem learning from him. Sometimes it's the rule book that you need. You know, you need to look at a different rule book because obviously our rule book right now is not working. <laughs> so. Well, exactly. And there's and I think in general, uh, Democrats have always been more machine like than Republicans. Absolutely. And um, and it's changed, like I've said, you know, the patronage and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and uh, there's certain things you could do today or wouldn't do today. We are losing to a machine. Now, if we had success against the Democrats in the last how many cycles it would be difficult we haven't right and i think part of that is to me it's staring me in the face going we're getting mowed down by a machine so the way we're doing it's not the right way to adjust we have to adjust yeah and we have to be more machine like more top down not yeah. to say like you you mentioned earlier i think it's a great term not to say that each county would have its own personality it would just as a like a i, I come from sales so just as like a, a national corporation with a regional sales offices they would all have different personalities, but at the core of what they are, they're all pulling on the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's true. How I mean, they go about it might be a little different, but it wouldn't be dysfunctional. Yes. And that's where right now what we're facing is we have some dysfunction in the family and we need to try to figure out how to fix that. And I know that they are trying. I do know that because I've talked to, you know, lots of just like you have. But when you see things like that happen with um, chairman across the district, you know, you don't expect somebody to treat a congressman that way. And and I would have cut not just his mic, I would have cut him off. I would have, I would say, especially I if I was in charge, if I was in charge of the phone call. Screen. You can cut the screen. Yep, but, I you know, again, I think he's a three-time offender on stuff like this. So right. that's even, he's it's actually even a bigger issue than, because yeah. that's not a one incident, right? right? There's three incidents we can think of within the last six months. That are totally that, did, did wrong. I mean, not following rules, um, treating people totally incorrectly and disrespectfully, and trying to do it in a way that you know Robert's rules better than anybody else, blah, blah. You know, that's disgusting. It just drives me crazy. So I've, yeah, I've witnessed it three times. And like you say, the last six months and seeing that was uh, an eye opening, just frustrating and kind of made me feel bad for uh, Derek Van Orden. And he can hold his me own. Too. I know I can, he can, well, hold, he can his hold his own, own but I felt it's disrespectful for him. And you yeah. think about his background and, and I don't know him that well. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not one to fawn over the military, but I mean, he was a Navy SEAL. I don't know him, but I know what Navy SEALs have to do, right. earn that trident. And they're, yes. you know, they're still people, good and bad. To see what he's probably been through in his life, right. to see that, yeah. it, it's, it just cracked my heart. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't on it, so I didn't know. But I do think that he needs to understand, too, that um, Congressman Van Orden needs to understand that he has a lot of support out here, too. You know, you might have one or two, I'll, I'll use the term bozos because you know we talk about circus clowns but um you have a whole lot more that are supportive and that's what they I need know. to concentrate on i agree and, and i hate and this is I hope this isn't negative but it's just positive <laughs> like that. when when at convention that same gentleman who caused trouble right and i admired Derek van orden for saying hey we're gonna get to lunch we're gonna hash this out right we agree upon 80 80 of the thing and then he does it and then he thinks it's a good meeting. And I remember talking to a, a fellow county chair that I'm friends with. And we both pretty much said, no, it, just, it won't end up well. And it'll be another example of why that element needs to be. Mm -hmm. There's no, I don't know how we, how do you crush them? I don't know. I think we've seen multiple times now where you can't miss reason with them. No, there's you no can't. Reasoning. There was no, no, no there's no. Gentlemen, I'm, I'm, this is where I say mental issue. He would not, I don't know if the capacity is there to, to come to a meeting of the minds. I don't know if there's a capacity there to understand that we agree 80 percent of the time i'm your friend not your foe right well, that's there so yeah i don't mean to be mean to him i, I don't know help if he has issues you reason with that well there is no john there is no reasoning i know because i'm living it i'm witnessing it in my own okay. county and I witness it. There is no reasoning. You have to just step away sometimes and just say, you know, there's not a thing I can do here. You can't. It, it, my saying is you can't fix stupid and you can't. And I don't mean to call anybody. I'm not referring to anybody as being stupid, but the actions I will say are stupid because it's not helping the Republican Party, or any elected official. That's it. And that's what our job I, is. That's I what agree. our job is. When I say is. crush, I, I certainly don't mean physical. I know you. I, know. I, I, mean, I, I mean, eliminate them from the party. Yes. Go, right. right. Yeah, you have to figure out a way to move them out. 
Right. That's what I mean. And I totally agree with you 100%. You and I have always agreed on that kind of thing. And with that, I'm not going to keep you much longer because I know we talked a whole lot and we always do. And I'm glad we do because it does make me, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm going into Friday afternoon revived because I was. There's a movie strategy, girl. Yeah. We, 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 we <laughs> face some, some negative. Yeah. We try to focus on the positive. Yeah, we do. Somehow we feel better. I know. I do. I feel a lot better. And I got to tell you, honestly, both of us, I know because we've talked about this. I mean, the, the way the convention ran this time was fantastic. They did a great job. Yeah. I, I was and pleased. Part of the reason why. I know exactly. It was great. So I was really happy to see that. And I was really happy to see Dave Anderson, man. He is a great parliamentarian guy. He's just fantastic. And I know he's on the Constitution Committee. So I have a lot of faith in all of this working out. I really do. But it, like I well, said. we know people on the RPW Executive Committee. Sure. I don't have to name them, but I, I can think of two or three that I know are good people and yes. understand the issues. So yes, they do. There is, There's when, hope. When you focus on what is there that could or is a positive, there's some things there. Yep, there is. So let's like focus on that. And you and I definitely have to stay in contact. Maybe next time we'll have to have Paul on with us. Yep, you know, he mentioned, he goes, uh, that girl, when I can be on the podcast. Oh, shoot. I got to get hold of him. Yeah, I will get We should have done it with him, too. That would have been great. So next time we'll do that for sure. But I will give him a, a jingle and uh, get him on a podcast because I do. I would love to talk to him. And he's, he's yeah. yeah. He has a lot of yeah, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the farm team thing, and, and it's great to see that he's out there doing that. Because honestly, I am excited about going to that. I haven't actually registered, you know, yet. Um, I just haven't yet, but I am going, and I'm actually talking to people. There's like three or four people here that want to go, so I'm kind of excited about that. Then there, and there are people that have been in the party here, but have never done any of that kind of stuff. They they never realize there's stuff outside of just the county. You know, and they're starting to learn that. And so that's really what my goal is here. We actually are setting up a legislative day. We're going to go down and um, sit with our legislators. They're going to go to the Capitol with me. Uh, there's like five of us. And we're just going to go down. And, you know, I said, let's just go down to the Capitol. It's our building. And you need to see them in their office. You need to go in and see them. And you need to sit down and just say, hey, we're concerned about public education. We're concerned about this. Just talk to them and get, you know, and, and see what they really go through, what their job is. Let's, you know, and so they're pretty excited about that. So I'm kind of excited because those are things I can do with the um, party being behind me or not. I can do that on my own. Well, you know, you, you, you know, you, uh, oh, geez, this uh, talk with Paul, you can talk to him before the podcast, but you know, Paul's had some challenges within his county party. He doesn't sit on the leadership committee. Mm -hmm. He's certainly capable, uh, more than capable to be the chair. Mm -hmm. um, he's on the uh, St. Croix County Board of Supervisors. Right. Very astute. So I mean, my point is, he's somebody that uh, really isn't utilized by the county party as, as much as I think he should be because of... Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. So you know what I mean? Yes. Say more than that. So right. you have that in common with him. I think that would be an interesting discussion. So my point, how do you still say... Because Paul and I talk about it. How do you still make an impact when you're kind of on the outside looking in? Yeah, it's really hard. It is hard. I got to admit. But this is the way I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it by um, growing my little coalition of people and letting them know, well, there's more to just to everything than there is to just going to a county party meeting. There's a lot yes. more to it. And so let me show you, you know, let's let's get hold of our legislators and say, hey, we'll help you guys when it's time to campaign. And they're like, oh, we can do that. We can do that. Yes, they need the help. You know, and one woman, well, one woman, well, I can't really walk a lot. Well, you don't have to do that. There's phone calls. There's stuffing envelopes. There's many things we can do. I don't mind. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Make a pie and auction off. Exactly. So there's a lot that they can do that they don't even, they're not aware of. And going down to yeah. the Capitol is something that they've, they're like, oh, we could just do that. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's our building. So these are things that I'm going to focus on, John, and I'm going to focus on, on continuing to podcast and talk about it and hope that it it's going to get better, you know, and I really believe it is. I, I have that inside of me. I believe that I'm kind of nutso sometimes. So, well, um, I'm going to focus on what I can do in Sawyer County and see for the kicks if I can't start my, start my again, my own political machine. Right. I'd rather not run the machine. Thing, but I'd hope to inspire to build it, uh, have it there. And it's a great idea. You know. It's a great, it's a great idea. It really is. And it would be good. It would be effective if it catches on and does in other areas too. And it may, I mean, that's a great idea. So maybe well, I mean, you know, again, I don't, we got to cut, we got to end it here, but I mean, you know, sure. you could, I, I thought of the counties uh, up here and you could bring 200 something delegates. You right. start getting it. Ron Johnson is going to want to talk to you up here. If you got that. Exactly. Yeah. If you got that power, yeah, you've got some power. So good for you. And I think it's a great idea. So maybe that'll catch 
catch on, John. Um, well, I appreciate you taking the time again, like I said, and now you've revived me for Friday afternoon. I appreciate that as well. So you have, you too, you too. Take care. Tell Christine and uh, Jack, I said, hey. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>